All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the final session of VTC 2021. My name is Thomas Galvez. I'm a member of the VTC committee and a co-host of this workshop. Saigon South International School is honored to be hosting the ninth annual Vietnam Tech Conference in collaboration with Eunice Hanoi. It is also my honor on behalf of the VTC committee to introduce you to Brian Mellon, who will talk to us about using Tracker, turn a video of anything that moves into an investigation in the upcoming workshop. Brian is a physics teacher from Chicago in the United States with 23 years of experience. In that time, he has taught in rural, urban, parochial, and international schools. He has taught science classes ranging from ninth grade biology to IB higher level physics. Brian always takes pride in designing engaging and fun learning experiences for his students. Everybody, please welcome Brian Mellon. Hello, everybody. Okay. Uh, thank you all for joining me today. Uh, I'm going to be showing you how to use a program called Tracker. Um, I saw it first about three years ago when a co-worker showed it to me, and I knew within about 15 seconds that I was going to be using this a lot. And now my students, 9th through 12th grade, they all use it all the time. Um, they use it when it's not even the most appropriate thing to use. I have to talk them out of using it when something else would be better. Um, I know middle school teachers who use it a lot with their kids. Um, for elementary school kids, I think it might be a little, the interface might be a little bit too complex, but certainly in, in elementary school, you are asked to give multiple representations of motion, and this will help you do that. And it always really impresses the kids once you get this, once you get this working. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and get into my presentation. All right, so as Thomas was just telling you folks, uh, my name is Brian Mellon. I am from Chicago in the United States. Um, and all that teaching stuff was true, okay? So first off, what is Tracker and what does it do? It is a free motion analysis program. There are other motion analysis program, programs out there that you can use but they tend to cost a lot of money. Vernier, I know, has this capability and Pasco has this capability, but if your school does not have a subscription to those uh, suites, uh, it's gonna cost you a whole lot of money to do it and you can just download this for free anytime you want. Uh, my students use it in a lot of different ways. Uh, it can, you can accurately measure distance and angles from photos or videos. My students have been doing that a lot this year. Uh, I am an IB physics teacher and the students have been working on their internal assessments. Actually, all the students, the way science education has been going, it's always stressed for kids to do their own investigations, which means they have to decide what they're gonna measure. And now what they can do, they can do with Tracker is, is you can measure things just from a picture, which means you don't actually have to be close to something in order to know how big it is. It actually, actually, sorry, it accurately measures time from videos as well. This was something I didn't think of initially when I started using this, but uh, if you take a video of something, your phone if you, that you're using, it takes three frames per second, which means whereas human reaction time is about a quarter of a second, if you video something and put it into tracker, it will break it down frame by frame so that you can time things within 0.033 seconds, which has really upped the accuracy of all of my students' investigations. Um, it was designed as a physics app, okay? So it determines uh, all this stuff, displacement, instantaneous velocity, acceleration, momentum, kinetic energy, all these things. It gives lots of different uh, representations of motions. And what it does is what the kids can do is that they can take a video of anything that they're interested in and they can make an investigation out of that. So that has been really, really cool. A cool thing that I've been able to add to my repertoire. Okay, the goals of this. Whenever you learn a new program, there is a learning curve to it. 
And the, usually the way it goes is you open it up and then you figure out, out how to use it in one capacity. And there is some troubleshooting that you need to do in order to do that. Uh, then it, you use it some more and you figure out something else and you figure out something else. And over the course of a long period of time, you become proficient, okay? I want you to be able to skip that, skip that time. So what I have done is I have created a lot of resources for you. And while I was making these resources, I was kind of thinking in my back of my mind, especially with virtual school being such a real thing now that all these resources I'm creating for this workshop, I can later use for my classes with a new group of kids. So I'm gonna give you those. We may have time to work with Tracker and become proficient. I'm not sure if that's gonna be a good idea or not. A couple of days ago, there was a handful of people in this workshop. Uh, as, of this, as of now, there are supposed to be 21. I don't know how many people are actually here because I'm sharing my screen. But my idea was if it was a small group, then you folks could be trying it at home and, if you, and we could be doing it together like I would be doing if you were with me in person. When I do- Brian, there's, uh, just so you know, there's 11, including uh, you and me. Very well, that's, well, that's okay. We're about 50% attendance. All right, well, we'll do, we'll make a, we'll make a judgment call on this, on that, okay? When the time comes. I want you guys to learn how to troubleshoot common problems using Tracker. It's always good to be able to troubleshoot ahead of time instead of a student has a problem and you're trying to figure out how to tr troubleshoot it. So I've had lots of experience in what the students will be doing that uh, isn't quite right. And I want you to also learn how to use the most gra useful graphical analysis tools within the program itself. So what I wanna do to introduce you to what this looks like is I'm gonna stop my share right here and I'm gonna open it up and I'm going to just show you what it looks like. Now, unless you join today, uh, after about nine o'clock, I sent you a now, let me show you this first. I sent you a, that wasn't what I wanted. I sent you a message telling you about the workshop resources, okay? And there was a couple things to do before the session. Uh, some people did the, the quick tracker survey. Again, if you, signed, if you went into this since about 9.30 this morning, I didn't know about you and I didn't send you a message. Um, it's not a big deal if you wanna do these things now. Um, just for your own reference, what, what you don't want is you don't want a class uh, full of kids trying to download a program at the same time. It'll completely destroy your internet and you'll be stuck. But anyway, don't bother with the quick tra tracker survey right there. Um, the tracker website, if you want to go for that. And if we do work on this in class, it's going to be with video one. Okay, so if you open it up, this is what it looks like before you've done anything. And I am going to click and drag a video in there to work with. All right, there it is. And Tracker plays everything frame by frame, so it will be automatically in slow motion. Brian, you're not sharing your screen right now. Am I sharing my screen? Okay, I seem to have accidentally unshared myself. Thank you for telling me. Thank you, Tim. All right, so I don't know how long I've been unshared. Let me, let me go backwards a little bit. So this right here was the tracker resource page that I created, okay? This is right in the description of the um, workshop. So it says click here for resources. And right there is the website where you can go and you can download Tracker. It takes about a minute to download. And then there, if we work on it today as a group, uh, video one is what we'll be working with. Hey, Brian, real quick, uh, if you don't mind, could you just copy and paste that uh, URL into the chat just in case somebody did not get the okay. email? So here is, yeah, good idea. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to get back to Zoom land. Okay. All right. Looks like I have to stop sharing to get back to Zoom land. All right. 
can go to the chat. So right there, that's where you can download the practice, the, um, the program. And I guess I have to give you the URL to the site so that you can get video one. So let me get back into there. Okay. All right, where is you? Come on. And I seem to be, okay, how do I get back to Zoom land? Okay, Thomas, help. Oh, never mind. I remember. Got it. Got okay. it. Looking on the wrong thing. There, there's my site of resources for you. Okay, so here's what we got. Uh, we've played this again. Let me share my screen. Okay. So this was just videotaped in my classroom earlier in the week. I've got a dynamics track and I've got two motion carts and running in slow motion. There we go. Okay. So, so if I want to analyze this motion, uh, first thing I'm going to do, and I'll go through all of these steps individually. I just want to give you a feel for what the whole thing is. First thing I got to do is I got to tell, give it a scale of distance because if an object is large on the screen, Tracker doesn't know if it's a large object or it's just close to the camera. So what I'm going to do is I measured this little distance right here and it's default. I have no idea why it's default. Thinks that that's 436 meters long. It's actually 0 0.33 meters long. Okay. And then let me zoom back out. Fit. Okay. And I'm going to track that cart that comes in from the top. Here it comes. All right. I'm going to pause it. And I'm going to zoom in on that. Okay. Oopsie. And I, I apologize because I forgot to do something. Right there. Here we go. There we are and zoom out. And it's gonna make a motion graph of this cart's motion as we go with it. So what we see here, it was moving and then it is not moving right there. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna track the other cart too, because why not? Uh, this was going with, why did it change again? There we go. This goes with an NGSS standard this is from a lab we did. The NGS standard is, is that the students are supposed to analyze the collision and determine whether or not it has momentum conserved. Okay, and now I'll zoom out so you can see what's going on. And it goes kind of crazy right now, but that's just because it's tracking any tiny, 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 tiny motion. If you take a look at the scale there, it's tiny. You'll see what I mean when, they, when it collides. And there it goes. So it was at rest, it rest, it rest, and then it was moving, okay? So this that I can use to tell exactly how far it went. You can use the slope of this line to find the velocity. In fact, I can have it make a velocity graph, okay? That's a velocity graph for the, for 
the bottom cart. Okay, I can change that to the first cart and make that, that into a velocity graph. Some person on the survey well, indicated they wanted to be able to show friction. Here's a great way that you can do that. So what we see is it has one, the, this cart here that, was, that came in from the top, it had one velocity, but you can see that it's slowly changing, slowly becoming less. That's due to friction right there. And then there, this part right here is the collision and then it stops. And we can make that graph really big for you to see. And we can do all sorts of other stuff with this as well. Um, so really it was a kind of a dream come, come uh, true for me when I found this. You can make acceleration graphs, you can make momentum graphs. Uh, up here where my cursor is, I can change the mass of it, all right? And then what I have is I've got an accurate uh, kinetic energy graph. One of the elementary uh, NGS standards is to relate the energy of an object to its motion. That's incredibly hard to visualize. But now we, we're taking a look at its energy. It has big energy, bigger energy, collision, no energy. Down there to nothing. And there's a whole other bunch of tools that we can do with this as well. This is just scratching the surface. Okay. All right. So. Stop. There we are. Okay, so any questions so far? Okay, well, let's uh, continue on then. We go back to my presentation. Okay, okay. there we go. Okay. So uh, it's very difficult unless you've got two different devices working to you know, follow along on a screen and um, follow along the screen and do things at the same time. So I'm just gonna show you. So I'm gonna go to video one, which is the, which is the one I've provided for you folks. And actually I think the best way to do it is just to not present. I'm just gonna go for, with it from here. So that video one, I'm gonna drag and drop that into here. And I originally asked on my questionnaire whether you had a Mac or a PC. That prompted me to go borrow a PC to see if it works the same on the PC and the commands are exactly the same. So it usually takes a, about 30 seconds to load the video. Right now it's taking considerably longer than it usually does. And what we're gonna see is one of the very first videos that I, that was ever made with Tracker by me. It was actually made out in front of our school with a drone. Thomas, who introduced me, was the person flying the drone, which was kind of cool. And I really didn't know what I was doing with this. And that's what makes it a perfect video to learn from because it's a good video to use for Tracker, but it's not perfect, which means uh, it's good to learn how to troubleshoot some things too. So in this video, it's a physics teacher crossing the street. That would be me. You're gonna see him come out from be below the tree. Then he looks up to see the drone and then does some wacky stuff while he is you know, crossing the street to make it an interesting motion graph. Okay, so now I'd like to point to, point to some more of the resources that we have. Okay, so uh, first off, I made a quick reference sheet for me using trackers functions, okay? If you click on that right there, that looks like this. It was annoying, okay? Um, so all the things I'm gonna be teaching you guys how to do today, I made, like I mentioned before, I made a screencast of doing it. And that's so, even though they are going to be releasing the recording of this session, it's nice to have something that's really quick and easy to use. And we have, just little menu guidance on how to find different things that you can use. So this is good to have handy, okay? So the first thing you gotta do always is you got to make what's called a calibration stick, okay? So what is a calibration stick? The calibration stick 
is what tells Tracker the scale, okay? Because right now I'm a pretty big guy and I look tiny on the screen. So if you look down here, there are two cones that we set up. I'll zoom in on that to about, I'll go 400% here. That is in the video because that is a meter, that is a meter stick. So the way this works is, is you go to track, new, and then down here to calibration stick, okay? So what that does now is it says shift, cl you shift click, end one, shift click to mark, and you shift and you click on each end of this calibration stick. And right now it thinks that those two cones are 64.27 meters apart. That would just be plain nutty. So we're gonna change that to 1.00 right there. So now it knows for this investigation that one meter on the screen is equal to that distance right there. Okay, now a cool thing about this is now you can measure any distance that you want, okay? For example, if I go to track, new, and then measuring tool, there is a tape measure. So tape measure, let's just say I wanna know how far, how long these painted lines are. I can just click and drag the ends here. And I know that the, this, these, two, this, these two ends of this crosswalk lane are 7.235 meters apart, okay? So this is where I, what I was talking about where my students are using it for, their, for measuring distances. Now there was someone in the questionnaire that indicated that they wanted to track rockets um, for that. Um, tracking rockets as we're gonna see is problematic, but what you can do and what I have done successfully is I've measured the height that rockets travel. Uh, I know for our elementary school, they do a, a water rocket investigation. Well, what I've done is, is I've videotaped rockets being launched, and then I've used this tape measure in the video to determine exactly how far it went up into the air, and we were able to, you know, give some prizes for that. Okay, so there is one thing that you can do. Now, to, to make the tracking video, we are going to wait a little bit. We're gonna wait in this video until after I look up at the sky and I look forward again. And I'll explain why, why I'm gonna wait for that. We'll do it again where I don't wait so I can show you how to troubleshoot. But if I wanna track it, I need to go up here to track again and it's new point mass. And now it is control click shift but I'm going to want to uh, zoom in on that a little bit. This is what we call choosing a template, okay? And it is the most important step. Let me zoom in, okay? And in doing so, I can see as of three years ago at least, at least I wasn't losing my hair. And in choosing a template, what you're doing is you're, you're choosing something for tracker to look for in every frame. So if I click here on the back of my head, you can see over here, there's the template. It's gonna look for this in every frame from here on out in the video, okay? And I chose that because it's always gonna be the same, okay? I'm gonna delete this one. I'm gonna show you what happens if you don't, don't choose wisely here. If I go to track, new point mass, okay? And now I control click. Now I'll say I use the front of my head. Well, now what it wants to find is, it wants to find this bunch of pixels, which is like brown and then gray and then white. And then if I hit the magic green button, it probably, yeah, it gets confused right there because it's no longer, it can't find the white, gray, brown combination. Okay. And delete this again, back it up. So what you're looking for in a template to track is you're just looking for two different things. You're looking for something that's gonna be the same in every frame, 
but you're also looking for something that's gonna be different from the surroundings. Now I, being new to Tracker when this video was made, hold on, I was unwise because I hadn't used this very much. And I wore a shirt that kind of blends in with the background. That was, uh, that, was a, that was a mistake. That makes it a little bit harder for Tracker to do its work. Okay, so in a moment here, I'm going to, we're just gonna let this run. Let's go out to fit. And probably the biggest mistake that students make initially is, is they don't mess with the graph. Um, there are a lot of different things that you can graph, which is awesome. Um, most notably though, the default is position X component. Now what that means, position X component means, that means move motion on the X axis. That means moving horizontal, okay? So the deal here is, is I am not moving horizontally. I am moving vertically, okay? So if I was to do that, what would happen would be is it would give me a complete nonsense graph, okay? So we're gonna, we're gonna try this again. And I am going to just make a graph of my Y motion. Okay. So track new point mass, zoom in. Find the physics teacher, there he is. Control shift, click, and this should work pretty well. And we're just going to look at the Y motion. So now it shows that I'm moving in one direction. And then I stopped and now I'm moving backwards. The line goes down when I move backwards. And then I take off forwards again and now I'm gonna run. And the kids will see that the line becomes steeper when I'm going faster. And I stopped again where the line flattened out. And in a moment, I'm gonna be off the screen. Now, it's still tracking, even though I'm not on the screen. And the reason why was because I was wearing a gray shirt. So once it was not able to find me, it said, okay, what around here is kind of close to that? and it just settled on this spot right here. So the graph is not perfect. What you would do if you were analyzing this is you would just stop analyzing it where it messes up and goes from there. Okay, so now what I wanna do is I wanna try this again and I wanna show you guys what to do when it messes up. Um, the kids, when they make their own video, they're novices at this and they don't think things all the way through and they, get a, they initially get a lot of error messages. So I'm gonna move back and this time what I'm gonna do is I'm going to track the entire motion, including when I go and look up at the sky. And if you don't know this trick right here, uh, your, your life with tracker is not gonna be very, good, very nice. Okay, so I'm going to control shift click once again on the back of my head and zoom out and hit the lovely happy green search button. Oh, I'm going to change it to Y. Hit the lovely green search button 
And in a moment there, it's going to get all kinds of confused. Holy cow, it didn't, got, didn't get confused. Tracker, you're getting smarter. It always gets confused there. Okay, so I'm going to do a, a worse job at choosing a template so I can show you how to fix this. Point mass, 400. Over to here. And now I will just choose that. Okay. Now I'm not going to zoom out so I can see closely what it does. Uh, okay, it went to my knee. It got confused and went to my knee. Now it's tracking my knee. And now it's all kinds of confused. So when I, when I looked upwards, the pixels it was looking for didn't exist anymore. This time it kind of assumed that my knee was the thing I wanted, which was also wrong. And now it's saying, I got nothing here. Nothing here is right. So what you wanna do with this, it says in the instructions here, shift click to mark manually, but there's something better. Uh, you want to control click shift again. What that does is it redefines it and you often have to do that a couple times before it figures out what's going on. And we are back on our way. So what happens when it gets confused like that is you wind up with a little bit of irregularity in your graph, but you'll find when students make their own graph, that's, that's kind of a normal thing. You're always gonna have a little bit of irregularity because the kids do things like they look up at the camera or they, they wiggle something a little too much, but it's a really easy thing to fix. You just, that control click shift that you use to define the template, you just use that again to redefine the template. And then before you know it, you are on your way, okay? All righty. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing for a moment, okay? Um, I know that that is a lot of steps and that's why I made those uh, tutorials for it. How are we doing so far, people? Okay, this is something that I know for a fact ninth graders can handle and I know for a fact that people in middle school can handle because I've got friends who do this with kids in, in middle school too. All right, so now some other things. Um, you can also measure angles with this. Okay, so I want to show you that. Let me stop this. Let's say I want to measure the angle of this street light. Okay, this is something that my students were wound up using a lot this year when they were making their own investigations for IB. Go back to sharing your screen, Brian. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so if you go up here to track, everything you seem to go, you wanna go up to track first, and then you wanna go down here to measuring tools, there is a protractor, okay? And then you get this little green protractor on here, and let's just say I wanna measure the angle that this stoplight makes. I just click and drag the vertex, and to measure the angle. That one's really hard to, hard to view because we've got a, a green background, but I can measure any angles like this. It's one of those things I never thought I would be using, but when the kids were saying, were saying uh, I need to measure this angle from a, from a picture. Oh, and that's something I should note. You can uh, upload pictures into Tracker. They don't have to be videos. So that's also very useful. Okay. I want to show you guys how to change axes. Let's go back to mass A right here. You may have noticed here that the graph is kind of, kind of weird. Usually a graph starts with zero down here in the corner. We can fix that. Okay. 
So I'm going to delete mass B, get that out of the way, and I'm going to delete protractor right there. Okay, and I started right about here. So there is this little crosshairs right there. Uh, the default setting for tracker is to assume that everything starts in the middle of the screen, which will never be the case. You'll always start someplace else. So what you, want, what you can do there to make the graph a little neater is you can take that and you can drag it. What the heck? And this has never happened before. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. This is embarrassing. This is literally something that's never happened before. Okay, I'll show you, I'll show you on something else how to do that, how to do the axis, how to do the axes. Or I just have to have to get out of this and get back in. That just went all kinds of weird. I don't know how that happened. Okay, so let's move on right here. Okay, so another thing I wanted to show you folks is what you can do with this, with this, uh, with this graph here. So I'm gonna make the graph big and okay, there are analyzing tools. Okay, so if you right drag, It says control, you get this analyze function right here. And this is really good for math teachers, okay? Uh, you can, and it's also of course good for physics teachers, but if you're teaching slope, this will give you the slope uh, in a couple of different ways. You can measure the slope, you can measure the area of it. So for a position versus time graph like this, um, the slope of the line gives you the velocity and it shows right down here that the slope is equal to 1.67 meters per second right there. And I can see the velocity at any given time just by moving this right there, okay? Another way that you can do that is with curve fits, okay? This is what I usually have the kids do because on their graph, if it's not perfect, what'll happen is, is that it'll be weird. So now if I want the, the slope over an area. What I wanna do is I wanna highlight that area right there. And then you may be familiar with the, equa the equation y is equal to mx plus b. That's this fit equation down here where it says y a t plus b, where a is the slope. So right there, it tells you me that I was, I was walking at uh, 1.48 meters per second. Now this gave my ninth graders a problem this year because one issue with this is it, it gives it to, to in scientific notation. And I had some kids who had never had the scientific notation. So if the, if the speed is really small, okay, um, they get confused because they don't know what 1.486 E negative one means, okay? For a physics teacher, you're also very interested in the area under the curve. For that, I'm gonna change this to a velocity graph. Okay, and now, my, and, now my, and now my axes are all messed up, so my graph is terrible. Okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go back to this one right here and show you that. So if you go to position, if you go to velocity right there, let's go to here and I will control click on this, go to analyze, okay? And what you can do is, is you can find, me measure the area under the graph. And you can measure the area of the graph. This one, it shows you what both carts did. But what I can do is, is I can click and I can move. These lines right here. And it'll give you the area under the graph. Okay, let me show it to you on the other one. The other one worked a little bit better. Let 
Okay. If I go to analyze area, okay. The shaded area here is the area under the graph, which is the distance it traveled. And here's where I was talking about where it gives it to you in scientific notation. So the area is 9.35 E negative two. The younger kids had no idea what that meant. What that means is 0 0.935 or 0 0.935 meters, which is 9.35 centimeters right there. And while I'm on this video right here, I, where the axes aren't messed up, I'll show that to you. So if you click and drag this right here, it will change the starting place. So I'm gonna move back to where it first comes in from the top. Here we are. And pause it. And if I don't want this, this graph to be kind of weird like this, where it starts down here at negative 0 0.30, I just move this spot right here. And all of a sudden, my position versus time graph is going to start at zero right here. All the numbers are negative because it's moving downwards, which is a negative direction. So now that just fixed my graph and made it so it made a little bit more intuitive sense to it. Okay. Now, another thing you can do is you can move it all around. Okay which is what I wanted to do with um, video one right here. Oh, there it, hit, it got way over here. It was behind stuff. Now I can fix it. All right. So with this, what you see is, as I don't actually move perfectly vertically, like I don't move like this, I kind of move like that. So what this can do is that that'll, that'll fix the graph further, okay? And you see changing this axis, that does change your graph a little bit, make it a little perfect. So that's the thing I always have the kids pay attention to. Okay, so those right there, those are all the features that I wanted to share, okay? Um, relating from really, really basic functioning with this, and to pretty, pretty big, pretty, pretty advanced right there. Okay. So let's see here. Other things I wanted to go into is I wanted to go into uh, troubleshooting a little bit. Okay. So now I am actually going to use my, I'm actually going to use my um, presentation that I made. I got away from that because I got sick of trying to go between two different two different places. Okay, so I've gone over all of this stuff. Okay, step by step, you have a link in my resources to this presentation. So if you want to look at it this way, we were looking through the calibration stick, measuring distances. There we go. Now this is something I wanted to bring out. Um, this is something really common that kids do. They used, let's say I used this brick in the background, measured out as 0.35 meters long, and then I want to measure the llama's neck. Well, the llama, as it shows right here, the llama's neck is 1.484 meters long, which is the what? And that's kind of ridiculous. And what students do is they will have their calibration stick or their calibration object. Uh, I sometimes use a meter stick, but you really you can use anything so long as you know how know its length. Your calibration object needs to be the same distance away from what you're trying to measure. Otherwise, everything is mis totally distorted as far as depth is concerned. So since the llama is way closer to the camera than my calibration object, that uh, distance is way, way off. One of my first videos, I had one of our counselors uh, kick a book. It was gonna be for a friction investigation and I wasn't thinking about it. And I made the calibration object a water bottle that it was too far back. And it said that she was 3.2 meters tall. She's a tall girl, but she's, no, she's nowhere near that tall. Okay. 
or if your calibration stick is too close, your object will be, all your distances will be too small. I showed you guys how to measure angles, okay? This right here, this is a cabinet in my apartment and there's a little bit of art on here where that's an 87.1 degree angle. I don't know of a way that you can do this more accurately. We went over tracking an object in a video. We went over choosing a template, okay? How it will look like, changing your axis where you click and you drag, drag, went over that, okay? Uh, what to do when it messes up, went through that, okay? Uh, whatever gra other graphs can be made, I talked really briefly about that. Uh, a lot of these I've never used, okay? A lot of them are just uh, content that we don't teach, so I've never, never used it, like all of these angles stuff like acceleration angle, but I have used position and I've used velocity and I've used acceleration, I've used momentum and I've used kinetic energy. All that stuff works very well. And I don't think that we have time for us to try. So what I'm gonna to go to is I'm gonna to go to some of the troubleshooting. Uh, where will students struggle? Uh, the first thing that they have trouble with is choosing the template well. They, they for example, I, in my video, there's a truck that goes by. I'll have the students try to track the truck and they'll just track a, the green door of the truck and it'll get confused because it's not a unique thing. The, it'll jump around inside the truck's door and it doesn't work very well. Another thing that they don't think about is they don't think about moving the camera. Obviously, tracker does not know whether the object is moving or you're moving the camera. <laughs> So every student should be, in, should be able to figure out a way to keep the camera still. That's just something that they need to think about. Uh, the background is not a solid color. That goes into the template where with the templates, you need it to be the same in every single frame. Um, the common mistake that the kids make is, is they don't think about that and they have a background that's very busy. And then when the background changes, what happens is, is tracker gets confused and they have lots of trouble. So often what the students will do is they will put a post-it notes on whatever it is that they're trying to track. And that makes for a really unique spot on that, on that um, object that you're, you're trying to track. And it works really well. Another thing that the kids do is they will get some construction paper and they'll put the construction paper in the background so that the software does not get confused with the background being busy. Um, this is a real common thing that they're graphing the wrong axis and their graph is nonsense. That's, and I've had students email me panicked uh, late at night saying that their lab didn't work and their graph makes no sense. And then they come in the next morning and I make one click where they were graphing the horizontal motion and they needed to be graphing the vertical motion. And all of a sudden they say, oh my goodness, I did such a good job with this because my graph is beautiful. And then we, we say, okay, we learned something. Um, another thing that they do is they forget to make the calibration stick and their number winds up, numbers wind up being nonsense. Uh, you'd be a surprise. Sometimes the kids don't question these things and they'll find that the the, the velocity of them running, because I do a lab where the kids track themselves running. Um, they'll find that their velocity is 423 meters per second, and they don't question that. Maybe that is not a realistic answer. Um, here's another thing I will show you if we have some time at the end. Um, the object is moving too fast for their camera to get a clear image. Um, for the person that wanted to track rockets, that's really the, the main problem, is it's moving too fast for the camera to get a clear image of it. Um, the problem with rockets is, is in order to film a rocket, you have to be far away from it because the rockets, they go hot. So in order to get the entire path of the rocket in the video, you have to be far away from it. So when we did a rocket competition, uh, I was filming on the roof of the high school and from that distance, the rocket, you can barely make out in the video. So it doesn't track very well, but you can still use the measuring tool in order to measure how high it goes. And we were able to figure it out from there. The object is moving too fast and it leaves the search box. 
I will show you that. And then there is the, uh, the ever present, they clicked on something and they can't figure out how to get back to where they want to be. So that actually happened to me during here where I had some weird clicking and all of a sudden my axes were over in the corner and I didn't know, couldn't figure out for a little bit how to get back where you wanted to be, where I wanted to be. So that right there, you get a lot in the beginning, but as kids become more proficient, not so much. Okay, so the importance of the background. This is a, uh, one of our teachers here. We did an experiment where the students were supposed to find acceleration due to gravity. Um, I, I had her throw the ball upwards right here where you have a plain white paint for background. If we were over here, it wouldn't have worked very well. Okay. The move, object is moving too fast for the search box. I'll show you what I mean by that. So I have another video. I'm gonna close a few of these windows here. And I'll screen, I'll sh I will show you something here. Um, close all tabs, get rid of these things. I don't, I don't wanna save it. No, don't save, okay. Nope. So when we went to virtual school, when we went to virtual school, we were in the middle of a general physics project last year. And the students were supposed to design these catapults and assess the efficiency. So what we wound up doing was we wound up doing video analysis of a catapult like this, and I sent them this video out to the students to analyze. And we ran into the problem of the object moving too fast. So I'll show you what I mean by that, moving too fast. So let's move it back to here. Let's go right about to where it gets launched. And I'm not gonna bother with the calibration stick. It's not important for this. I'm getting a lag on this today. It's a few frames forward. There. So I'll go up here to track, new, whoopsie, wrong click, track, new, point mass. All right, control shift. And let's say I want to track this spot right here. Well, if the search box, this little area here is the search box. That's where, where it's looking for the object. So if the object is moving really fast, it's out of the search box in the next frame, which is no good. But it's fine if you change the size of that search box. So let me try that again. Track, new point mass, and control click shift this thing right here. And now if I make this nice and big, when I search it, it doesn't have a problem. Okay. So there's another thing that gives kids a real headache until they realize that they needed to, to um, change that size of the search box. That was actually something I didn't know until we started running into problems with it. Okay. Okay, graphical analysis tools, I've already shown that. Okay, finding the slope, I've already shown that. Finding the area, I've already shown that. And only one more thing, tips for making videos. Sometimes uh, you, get a, you get an error message. That is that the, the file format doesn't work. Um, let me show you what that looks like. For my camera, it, it does that but it's no big deal. It takes a minute to fix. Hey, Brian, five so, minutes remaining. Uh, yep, I got it. So this here was my original of that first video I showed you. And it says video could not be opened. And that seems to be really common for certain iPhones where it says the video could not be, it says the video could not be opened. But never fear because there are a whole huge number of websites you can go to where you just click and drag a video into it and it'll convert it for you. So I didn't pick this one for any particular reason, but it, 
I take that one I had right here and I click and drag it in, okay, or select file, okay, and I just choose it. You can convert it and then you down, it converts it to another format and then you can use it. And that I think is it. Yep. We're just about out of time. Okay, so thank you for joining me today. Okay. Is there anything in the chat? Chat is clear. Chat is clear. Okay. Okay. So I just talked for an hour. Okay. Um, questions you may have. I don't have any questions, but I teach uh, elementary age kids and I was just trying to figure out how I can use this um, for their age group. Um, I do have the older kids. So I think I could potentially like what you did with the cones measure out with a meter stick and then, you know, they can practice using rulers and measuring the lengths or even angles or something like that. Um, velocity and stuff is a bit too, too uh, yeah. intense for them at this age, but I think it still could possibly be used for elementary age kids if you're just measuring. Measuring stuff. Yeah, exactly. I, have actually, I have actually worked with younger age kids with this, but the way it's, it's, it's gone is, is, for example, we have a what's, what's called the group four project where the older kids for one year worked with the younger kids and they were studying motion. So when the kids were making their, when the young kids were making their own investigations, the, the kids that were in the 11th and 12th grades, in some cases, they were using tracker with the kids where the kids were making their own invest, little kids were making their own investigations and then the high school kids were helping them analyze it using tracker. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that would be a really good idea. Mm -hmm. The same, same with you, Shan, the similar age, I think and you could measure like with forces, how long it, uh, the distance it rolls after ramp or yeah. how long it roll down a given distance and things like that yeah and the cool thing about that is is they can they can see another representation of what happens when it's slowing down okay mm -hmm. because they'll see that velocity get closer to zero they'll see that they'll see the curve of that line position versus time graph get um, less and less and less yep okay. yeah thank you very much for everything the tool was definitely designed for physics teachers and then I was, I was said to myself, could this be used with, with middle school kids? And then I found out that lots of middle school teachers were using it, having kids making their own videos. And I thought to myself, maybe I shouldn't be underestimating these technology natives here. Okay. All right. Well, thank you guys very much for, for joining me. I hope you folks can find a use for this. It certainly has changed the way I teach um, everything motion related. Okay. Thank you very much.